hello everyone i read seven books in october and i'm very very excited to share all my thoughts with you wait no i read six books and i dnf'd one book but it was i have a lot of thoughts about the book i dnf'd so i'm going to talk about seven books with you today we're going to get into my october wrap up you guys know how these things work you know that i'm going to give you a little bit of information about the book and then also tell you my thoughts so we are going to dive straight into it hello everyone i hope you will allow me to briefly interrupt so i can talk about the sponsor of today's video i am so 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 excited to work with skillshare so thank you so much skillshare for sponsoring today's video i'm super excited to partner with you guys so in case you've never heard of skillshare before Skillshare is an online learning platform that hosts thousands and thousands of online classes and members. There is so much for you to choose from where you can get inspired and learn new skills. And one of my favorite things about Skillshare is just the sheer variety of all the different classes they have and all the different topics. There are so many different informative and engaging classes based on some more creative things like crochet or digital art or painting, but they also have really kind of career focused classes as well, such as like marketing, building your business and product productivity. Skillshare is just so 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 great because if you're like a homebody like myself like I don't love leaving the house. Skillshare just gives me this really safe space where I can learn so many different skills and up my skill level without even having to leave the house. Like I can do it from the comfort of my own living room. Recently I've been dabbling in maybe making some book talks. Like I've been trying to enter the bookish sphere on TikTok and a class that has really really helped me with that is Reels, Shorts and TikToks. How to tell engaging stories from your smartphone. This class honestly has really helped me out like I'm kind of overwhelmed sometimes TikTok is a fairly like new thing still right like YouTube I grew up with so I'm not gonna say it came naturally to me but like I already kind of knew what YouTube was all about but TikTok is a whole new ball game and so this class has really really helped me up my skill level and also prepare me for like trying to I don't know make new TikToks like trying to make a name for myself on a different social media it's already helped me with so many different things like things like lighting and sound and stuff that's more practical while also teaching me like how to make engaging short form content as someone who has like only ever really done long form content for the past like five years. I honestly just love it a lot. Like I've already learned so much. And if you want to join me, if this sounds like something that interests you, then Skillshare is offering the first 500 people who click my link in the description box a 30 day free trial. I would highly recommend taking advantage of this opportunity. There are so many different classes you can try out in 30 days. And if you like it, you can stick around. And honestly, it's genuinely just worth a shot like I'm having the time of my life I've already finished some classes and I just feel so much more talented I feel like I have more skills than I did before it's it's fantastic so thank you so 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 much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video obviously I'm very 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 grateful and guys remember to click that link in my description box so with all that being said let's get straight into my October wrap-up I know people kind of hate when creators do this, but first of all, I just really want to apologize for the lighting in this video. The weather has been all over the place and I only really use natural light when I film my YouTube videos. So if I'm all of a sudden in the shadows and then all of a sudden really, really bright, I apologize, but that's not what this video is about. Let's get straight into the books, Jamie. The books. The first book I read in October is a book that I cannot believe I haven't spoken about on my YouTube channel yet. I read it like off camera, no reading vlog, in the comfort, like of my bed and I read it in one sitting and I absolutely loved it and that was The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. I am obsessed with the series. Okay, I read Mile High a couple of months ago, a few months ago, gave it five stars. This is the second book in the series. Again, did not disappoint, five stars. I feel like this is going to be a, just a five star series for me. Basically, this is, I would say like enemies to lovers, forced proximity, best friend's brother, romance, and I, ate every single bit of it up. I loved it. Like that sounds like a lot of tropes and usually I don't love when a romance author will just put in this huge amalgamation of tropes in into their romance novel. Most of the time I'm like choose one babe. No Liz Tom Ford she's done it. She's done it so well. It is just the healthiest and most delicious salad of tropes. I ate it up. I ate it up and I felt so full and Enough with the metaphors. Basically, we follow two main characters, Ryan and Indy. So Ryan is the brother of our main character from the first book, and Indy is her best friend. So already we really know these characters quite well, because what I love about this series is how detailed the world is, how detailed the friendships and relationships are with other characters. I feel like Liz Tom Ford has done such a good job at like setting those things up. So it means that when we get to the second book, we already know these characters really, really well. I don't think you need to read them in order, but I definitely would recommend it because this, I would feel definitely spoils some 
stuff in the first book, but I think you could probably read this as a standalone if you're not interested in Mile High. But basically, Ryan is on the basketball team and he is the captain. I was about to say leader. I don't know anything about sports. He's the captain of the NBA Chicago team and he's about to lose his captainship because he doesn't really have like the best personality for the public eye. Like he's very just cold and serious and his coach is basically like not a fan of him and it's like you need to get a girlfriend or something. You need to do something to help your public image. And then Ryan lies and is like well actually I do have a girlfriend and he says that it is Indy. Jump back a little bit. Okay. Indy has just been cheated on by her boyfriend. She needs a place to live. She's having a really, really rough time. And then her best friend suggests that she moves in with Ryan, her brother, because Ryan has a spare room in his apartment. So they're now living together. They're butting heads. Now they have to fake date as well. Oh, that's right, there's another trope. <laughs> fake dating. Anyway, they now have to fake date. And oh my God, their romance is just so, so, so good. Oh my goodness. Ryan is like that really cold kind of like, oh, I don't really care about anything, but he's actually so sensitive and sweet. And his love language is acts of service. And like, I'm an acts of service girly through and through. So I was like, wow, you're my king. And then I just already knew that I loved Indy. She's just like so fun, so bubbly. Sometimes it cringes me out when authors do this, but I actually think it was done really well in this book where Indy's a lover of romance novels. So it is quite meta. Like she talks about like romance tropes and stuff like that. And I feel like it was done well. It wasn't too cheesy in this novel. And I really, really loved that aspect. But just watching these characters develop as humans and then also as into a couple was so heartwarming. And I just genuinely feel like these are some of the best written romances that are out at the moment. I know for a fact that I'm not like telling anyone any new information. Like I know that these are really, really hyped up romance novels. But if you are someone who really like listens to my advice and my recommendations, if you think that my recommendations and opinions are gospel, I don't know anyone who would, but if you do and you haven't read this yet, just know that this is worth the hype. This is one of those romance books that is 100% worth the hype and I loved it so much. So I gave this five stars, of course. After that, I read a book of my Kindle on Kindle Unlimited, although I don't think it's on Kindle Unlimited anymore, at least on the Australian Amazon, but I did read The Summer We Fell by Elizabeth O'Rourke. I was very much in a romance mood after reading The Right Move, but I read Summer We Fell and I gave this three stars, I believe. It was kind of random. I feel like three stars may even be generous. It was just like a very random romance. I was kind of expecting like fun, like summer vibes, like, I don't know, there's a hot shirtless man on the cover holding a surfboard. Like it was giving me like fun summer fling. It actually was really, really intense. It was quite intense. But anyway, we basically follow two separate timelines and we follow our main character, whose name is, her name's Juliet. Okay, follow our main character, Juliet. And she in the present timeline is like famous and she has to go back to her like hometown where she grew up because the woman who took care of her when she was a teenager has just gotten cancer. And then we also have the past timeline where basically Juliet's an orphan and she's been taken in by this like super religious family, hence the woman that is like her caretaker. And she's also dating their son and it's a very religious household. And Juliet's kind of like from the other side of the tracks, like kind of a bad girl, but she's trying to be like a good Catholic girl now. But then also we have Luke, who is her boyfriend's best friend when they were in college. And every summer he comes to visit Juliet and the family and stay with the family. And he's also kind of had a hard home life. And in the present timeline, he's also come back to the hometown to help look after Donna, who is the caretaker character. And they are enemies. Juliet and Luke are enemies. And we don't know why. We find that out in the past timeline. So they're butting heads, but they're also kind of like very, very attracted to each other while they're trying to like help out this this woman and while she's sick. If it sounds really convoluted, that's because the story kind of is. Like, I wasn't confused when reading it, but trying to explain it, I think, to someone, I'm like, yeah, I fe it feels like a lot is going on. I thought this was gonna be a summer fling. It ends up being this like very epic, tragic love story. The thing is, this book had a lot going on and was quite boring, and I do feel like a lot of it was quite underdeveloped. For example, I don't know how Juliet became famous. I know she's a famous like musician, but there's not really anything about her fame in the book. So I just don't think she needed to be famous. I feel like that's a big deal. I feel like if you're famous, that's kind of a big part of your life. We didn't really hear anything about it. I definitely much preferred the past timeline. I think that's why it's three stars. I feel like learning about the intensity of that environment and of everything that happened that led up to the present, like I found that really, really interesting. But the present timeline just wasn't 
I wasn't cutting it. I just didn't really buy the characters' chemistry. Like, I bought that they were enemies, but I didn't buy that they secretly were into each other. And like, yeah, they had a lot of sex, but like, for me, that doesn't mean that like, you're in love. Like, any romance author can write just a bunch of smut scenes, but it takes a skilled one to also like, write a good enemies to lovers. And I just feel like this one missed the mark a little bit. I don't know, I found some of it to be heartwarming and I found a lot of it to be quite interesting, but also the present timeline was just so boring that I couldn't really give it more than a three stars. And even now on reflection, I think I'm probably rating it too highly. But yeah, that's kind of all I remember about this book. It was kind of a fever dream, but that is the summer we fell. I do want to read the second book in the series because that one does seem a little bit less stressful and a little bit more fun. So I do want to read that one as well. But yeah, if you're like thinking like you want a fun summer romance, this is not the vibe. This is quite intense. And the next three books I'm going to talk about, I actually read for a reading vlog that I posted quite recently, which is where I read only green books for a week. The first book that I read for that video was Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Habeck. And I loved this book. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I annotated the shit out of it and usually when I annotate it's just things here and there. This one I was like oh no like every single page has something that I want to keep close to my heart which then like kind of defeats the purpose of annotating so I had to slow down a little bit but like I loved this. I loved this. This is one of my favorite comments that I got on that video. I cannot believe you've convinced me to read a book about a man who turns into a great white shark. I feel like that's all you need to know. It says so much, but also so little. But anyway, we follow our newly married couple. In their first year of marriage, the husband slowly, physically turns into a great white shark. I need to stress that I guess this is kind of magical realism because this isn't like a new thing. Like it's a rare thing, but like in this world, there is this like common kind of, I guess, disease? illness disorder I don't know it's a terminal terminal illness where a person can develop an animal mutation and they start turning into that animal they have like a certain amount of time while they start the process they then turn into that animal and they have to live as that animal so basically I guess it's a metaphor for like death and loss and, and grief maybe some sort of like other terminal illness but the way that oh my god it was actually Wait, I'm such an idiot. Of course it's a metaphor for like terminal illness, like cancer or something. Of course it is. But the way it was told, it was so beautiful. Like it feels wrong to call this book absurd when really the concept is rather absurd. Like it's kind of ridiculous when you say it out loud, but it was done so, so, so beautifully. Like the way it was written, this is one of the best love stories I've ever read in my life. Like this made me cry so hard. I forgot he was turning into a great white shark. Like, uh, that became so normalized to me because of how emotionally impacted, like, any sort of humor that comes with that, gone. Out the window. It was so, so tragic and so heartbreaking and I absolutely loved it. We also follow, like, several other generations. We follow some other characters. But it's all just so, so, so intense. And then the ending was also so beautiful and it just concluded the story so perfectly. I feel like if you're really into, like, weird fiction, you'll love this. Like, no doubt about it, you'll love this. But if you're kind of apprehensive, if you're like, I don't know about that one, Jamie. Like, that one seems a little bit off kilter for me. That seems a bit, a bit wacky and I don't know if I want to go there. Go there. Uh, this is me telling you, go there. It is so readable and so beautiful and you forget about the wackiness. You forget about it. I loved this book. I can't wait to read more by Emily Habeck. I loved it. I ate it up. Anyway, loved this. Five stars. Then I read Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater, which I gave four stars. This was quite a fun little thriller. There was definitely inconsistencies and definitely not perfect, but I had a pretty good time reading, reading this one. Basically, we follow our two main characters. We follow Roach and we follow Laura. They're both booksellers. Roach has been working at this one bookshop for a really long time and she's very into true crime. Like in a really scary way, she's really into true crime. And Laura is this new woman who starts at the bookshop and she's very enigmatic, she writes poetry. She's very like, I won't say mysterious, but she's like an it girl, but like a literary it girl. Roach just becomes absolutely obsessed with her. And Laura hates Roach because she hates true crime. And honestly, I understand where she's coming from. But we basically follow these two main characters as everything kind of comes to a head. It's all very, very dramatic. I wouldn't say it's particularly thrilling. Like, it's it's marketed as a thriller. And, you know, there's, like, blood 
on the cover here. I wouldn't call it particularly thrilling. Like, like I wasn't really on the edge of my seat reading it, but I found it to be a very, very interesting read and a very interesting character study of the two characters. I do wish that maybe we did have a little bit more mystery when it came to Laura's character. I feel like all of her personality and her flaws and her secrets were kind of shoved in our face a little bit too soon. I kind of would have liked if you know, we kept some of that mystery with her and, you know, we learned more about her as Roach learned more about her as well. I do also think there was a metaphor that felt kind of unfinished. There was like this big snail motif and it never really came to anything and never really amounted to anything and so it kind of just like confused me. So I do feel like there were a lot of loose ends in this book that weren't quite tied up. But I have read some reviews of this book since reading it and a lot of people who also are booksellers say that this is a very accurate depiction of life as a bookseller. I think maybe despite all of the crazy stuff that happens as well. So really really like that. I really love a thriller that focuses on the characters and the character study because I do find that thrillers sometimes do tend to throw away strong characters and in depth characters in favor for the plot so it was nice to read a more character based thriller and I really enjoyed that so I gave it four stars and I do recommend this novel and then <laughs> I attempted to read Masters of Death um, I actually DNF'd this novel uh, which I feel really bad about because it was also my Patreon book club pick but I don't think anyone really, like I think a very small handful of people in my Patreon actually finished the novel and everyone was a hater. And they were all like, Jamie, don't finish it. Like, do, like it is not worth it for you. I had to DNF this about halfway through. This was actually the second chance that I gave Olive Blake. Jesus, that sounds like I'm some sort of authority figure. I'm not. But my rule is, for me personally, I will give authors two chances if I don't like their first book. I'll give them a second chance. If I don't like their second book, they're kind of done for me unless somehow someone manages to convince me. I don't think anyone could convince me with Olivia Blake anymore. Like, I couldn't even finish the second chance I gave her. This was a mess. This, this, this book was a mess. Basically follow our two main characters, Viola and Fox, but they're definitely not the two main characters. There's about like 17 characters in here. None of them are well thought out or well fleshed out whatsoever. Everyone is kind of like some sort of mythological creature. Like Viola's a, a, a vampire. Is it explained to us at all? No. Do we understand the context of vampires in this world? Not once. Not once do we get any sort of world building. And that is a very frustrating for me and it just doesn't make for a very good book. I feel like Olivia Blake gets very, very swept up in her ideas and her writing. And that just means we lose any semblance of lore or or plot or world building or anything. Like, I could not explain this world to you whatsoever. I just know that there are so many different mythical, like there's demons, there's angels, there's psychics, there's ghosts, there's, but like, what's the context of any of them? Like, there's nothing. There's, there's literally no world building. And I know that people get very upset sometimes when it comes to like info dumping about worlds and stuff like that. People are like, oh, too much world building, not enough, like blah, blah, blah. You gotta have some. You know what I mean? You gotta have some. And this had zero. I just not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. A whole lot of words, a whole lot of characters. No substance. Absolutely no substance. I then read what actually happens in this novel and I think I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I did this a favour because I don't rate my DNFs. If I DNF'd it, I didn't finish it. I don't think I have the right to rate a book if I haven't finished it. So I did this book a favour by DNFing it because it would be getting a one star. But yeah, not a fan. Did not like Masters of Death. Not for me. No thanks. After that, I finally finished Glow by Raven Kennedy. I feel like I've been reading this for so long. I think it took me over a month to actually finish this book. And it is, you know, well over like 700 pages or 600 pages, but it's a very fast paced series. So it really shouldn't have taken me that long to read it. But this is the fourth book in the Play to Prisoner series, which is a series that I've been absolutely loving this year. And I ended up giving this installment three stars. I feel like things got a little bit messy. There were a lot of things that were introduced that maybe should have been introduced earlier in the series. So reading this book kind of did become less captivating for me and I don't think it needed to be as many pages as it did. I feel like there were a lot of scenes that felt like filler. By the way, if you've not heard me talk about the Plate of Prison series, where have you been on my channel? You must be new. But this whole series is a King Midas retelling and we follow our main character, Orin, who's gold-plated, she's fully gold, and she is uh, King Midas's favored concubine. And that's all I'm gonna say about the series. I don't wanna say anything else. I don't wanna spoil it for anyone. That's just, I would say, the first book concept. But yeah, I just feel like this book got a little bit too messy for me. I feel like there were characters' backstories being introduced that really should have been introduced 
book two or book three, not book four. And I feel like there are a lot of side characters that we get to see the perspectives of, which I absolutely love. Like I love when that happens. We saw too little of them, I find. I feel like we spent too much time in the perspective of our main characters, which like, yes, makes sense. They're our main characters. But give me some, a few more interludes with some of these other side characters that we get perspectives of because I found them really interesting and I was so excited when I got to see a chapter from them but I think it, it happened so so rarely with within so many pages I just feel like we could have had more this book just could have been shorter I think but I still really do love the series I cannot wait to read uh the next book which is coming out in December it's actually just been announced that this is no longer going to be a five book series and it's actually going to be a six book series which I'm very actually quite excited for but also worried considering how I felt about the length of this one and how much that was in it that I don't think needed to be in it but regardless I'm very excited to continue the series even though this has been my least favorite so far hoping that we can climb back up the rating scale with the with the next book and finally the last book that i read in october was he started it by samantha downing which is actually samantha downing's second thriller although i've read two other of her thrillers so i've read my lovely wife which i'm obsessed with it's one of my favorite thrillers of all time and then i read for your own good last year which i gave three stars and this is her second book so i like skipped this one but i finally read this and i gave it two stars but i do feel like maybe it's more of a, in between three and two it wasn't that bad but it wasn't like great basically we follow our uh, three main characters, they're all siblings, and basically their grandfather died recently. But to get his inheritance, the three of them have to go on a, they have to recreate a road trip that they took with their grandfather many, many years ago when they were children. So we get to learn about the road trip that happened back then, and then now also we are with them on the road trip as they try to get their inheritance. And this time, you know, there's spouses that have come along and, and stuff like that. And basically every single one of the siblings has a secret that they're kind of hiding. We follow our main character, Beth. She's the middle child and we're in her perspective and stuff. I thought it was okay. It was quite boring at times, considering it's this road trip novel and everyone's got a secret. Like, that should sound very, very exciting. But basically, on this road trip, they're going to visit, like, all these kind of weird places, weird tourist attractions through the United States. So they visit, like, the Bonnie and Clyde Museum. They, they visit this, like, UFO sighting area. They visit all these weird kind of, like, macabre museums and attractions. It just kind of felt really boring. <laughs> like, a lot of it felt very, very boring. And the parts that were the most exciting, I also felt to be kind of lackluster. Like, it wasn't particularly thrilling. And when stuff finally did happen, I was just kind of like, oh, cool. Like, like I wasn't blown away. I was actually just kind of excited that something was happening. But yeah, I don't know. I felt like the ending was okay. It didn't really tie up any loose ends for me. It felt kind of disappointing. And I felt like there were a lot of storylines and threads in here that just kind of weren't all that well developed. I really liked the concept and parts of it I was like yep like cool page turner but then the parts that were boring it, like I feel like it would be like fun and then boring and then fun and then boring and it was just be consistent please. But now that I'm thinking about it maybe two stars is accurate of a rating for me but it's unfortunate because My Lovely Wife like amazing amazing novel and then everything else I've read by Samantha Downing not as good but she had a new release recently and I'm going to be reading that this month in November so hopefully that one is gonna be just as good as my lovely wife but we'll see but yeah this was the final book I read and I rated it two stars so these are all the books I read in October I really hope you enjoyed this wrap up guys wrap ups are some of my favorite videos to film I just love talking through all the books that I have read in the previous month thank you so 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 much for watching of course the cheeky reminder that all my socials are linked down below so if you want to follow me on bookstagram on booktok those links are down there and if you want more exclusive content from me if you want extra content i also have my patreon link down below where i put out maybe like three exclusive videos a month three extra live shows there's a lot of content on there so if you are thinking about maybe joining that all the information is on the page and of course a massive thank you to skillshare for sponsoring this video as well so if you do want to try out skillshare get maybe 30 days free and 40% off a full year of Skillshare that link is down below as well so I would recommend clicking that but yeah thank you so 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 much for watching this video I love you all so much and I'll see you very very soon in the next one bye